Greetings everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about FreeCiv. And as you can tell by the name, it is a free and open source version of Civilization. Uh, the very first versions were inspired by Civilization 1, but over the years it has evolved to uh, include uh, aspects of both, both Civilizations 2 and 3. And uh, I will put some links in the show notes uh, to the Wikia pages for this game. Um, there's all kinds of information here. You can uh, find out how it all got started, the timeline, uh, the comparisons between uh, Sid Meier's versions and the Free Civ versions. Uh, the people behind it, the licensing and all that good stuff. And there's tutorials here, manuals and everything you need to know to get started with the game. Um, if we go to the download page, we can see that we can actually download the source code and compile it ourselves if we so desire. And we can also go back to previous versions of Civ. They're all still available for us. And all the way back to version 1. But today we're going to be concentrating on version 2.4.0, which is the latest version. And there are two different kind of two different uh, clients to play this game with. Uh, the game itself is exactly the same between the two. It's just how the client interacts with the game uh, is the only difference. And today we're going to be looking at that. So we'll be first looking at the GTK2 client, and then we'll be looking at the SDL client. So we will load up the first one and have a quick look. Okay, so this is the first client we're going to look at, the GTK2.0 client. Um, from the splash screen we can start a new game, uh, we can start a scenario, or we can load a save game, or connect to a network for a multiplayer game. And from what I understand, the multiplayer in this game is really good. So uh, if you're into multiplayer, check it out. I myself am not, so we'll just uh, do the single player thing. And we will start a new game, and we'll have a look at the setup in, the, in this client. It takes a minute to start the server up. So just bear with me for a second. And there we go. Just let me uh, stretch this out so we can have a better look. And there we go. Okay, so I've been in here and I've set a bunch of stuff already. So, um, but we'll just go through quickly on how to set stuff up. Um, number of players, you can uh, increase or decrease those. AI skill level. Now, from what I'm reading, uh, <laughs> I've seen a lot of complaints, well, I don't know whether it's complaints or praises, but uh, they're saying that even at the novice level, this is a very hard game to beat, like a very hard game to beat, so um, I'm assuming it'll be easy in the beginning and then get very, very complicated near the end is the way I've been reading the, the comments on it, so uh, I'm thinking, uh, just leave it at novice, at least for this video anyways, I'm not going to worry about uh, cranking it up too high. And we can uh, pick our rule set version. Um, now what I've done is I've installed a mod. I've, I've installed a mod that uh, takes the Civ 3 rules but maintains the Civ 2 combat style. So, And while I'm talking about mods, actually just uh, let me bring this in here. Uh, this is the new mod pack installer for version 2.4. I don't believe this was in 2.3. At least I certainly don't remember it. I would have been using, utilizing it. But there's there's the mod there that I've installed. So basically just select it, install mod pack, simple as that. I've also installed the free, the free sounds mod as well. So that's all there is to uh, actually installing mods in this version, which is really nice. And there's only four available right now. I'm sure more will come as time goes on. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that was a really good improvement I found. So anyways, that's just a quick blurb on what you can do with the mods. So that's the, that's the mod rule set I'm going to use. Um, this is a console here, and you can see all the settings I've made are actually, uh, you can actually type these in if you want, uh, set tiles per player to 100, and then type it in down here. Or you can come into the more game options. And just pull that into the window here. So this is uh, ba our basic setup here, um, and there's all kinds of stuff you can go through. I'm not going to go through all these options because I'll be here for uh, <laughs> probably hours talking about it, and I don't even know what most of them do anyway, so it's kind of useless for me to do that. Um, you can define uh, your map size in a variety of ways, either by tiles per player, number of total tiles on the map, or you can go width and height. So. Uh, I generally go width and height, and I don't know, go, say, uh, I don't know, 240 by 120. So 
sort of an oblong rec uh, rectangular type of uh, map and you can even set it up to be a hexagonal map like Civ 5 um, you have to uh, use uh, specific uh, tile sets to actually utilize that though so uh, I think for this playthrough because we're going to be using the Civ 3 rules we'll just go with isometric which is what Civ 3 was in but it's quite possible to play in a hexagonal map and I, I have done so in the past and it's pretty interesting so and then there's all kinds of other options we can set here um, yeah so you can set how many hills there are you know a percentage of map that is land I'm gonna say 45 percent on that and maybe 45 on that so you can go through and set all this stuff up and the amount of special resources on the map 250 now that's per thousand tiles so for every thousand tiles you're gonna have 250 tiles that have resources on them so that's how that works and then you can set uh, the total number of tribal villages in the map and I'd almost like to bump that up double it there we go and you can uh, start you know uh, set up how what you start with uh, this shows that we start with a city founder which is a settler a train worker which is of course a worker and an explorer and you could actually add a few more things in here too, a defensive unit if you want um, so you can set up the start of your game that way um, most of the stuff has tool tips so you can uh, figure out what what all these values do and I don't really mess with too much in here um, but you can really fine-tune your games if you want so anyways that's uh, all I'm gonna say about that so we'll just hit the OK button and as you can see there it set all the way my sizes and everything that I uh, just uh, adjusted in that screen so and then you can pick a nation and we can pick the and there's <laughs> there's a, th a whack of them and it just goes on and on and on <laughs> so I don't think there's any unique traits within them it's just basically a map or a, uh, flags and city styles and stuff like that so there's Canadian I think I'll pick that since I'm Canadian and maybe we'll go with the Celtic so from there on we'll just uh, you just start the game and off you go so but uh, what you can also do, actually come back in more game options, uh, is you can save anytime you make changes. Oops, let's uh, pull that back in. Anytime you make changes in here, you can actually save it so that the next time you start up a game, it'll take all this value as uh, default. So I'm just going to hit save on that. And the reason I'm doing that is so I can show you the next client. And uh, we will maybe have a look at that now before we get any further. Okay, so here we are in the SDL client. Looks a bit different from the uh, the other one. Um, you have a main menu here where you can load your game and join the servers, and uh, there's some option screens too for setting up your game. Um, pretty much the same as the other one, uh, just a little bit different interface. So I'm not going to go into these. Um, they're pretty much self-explanatory once you get in there. So I'm just going to hit start a new game, which takes a minute to start up. Okay, there we go. Now, the only thing I don't like, uh, there's a couple things with this client that kind of bother me. Um, the first one uh, is as you're coming in, they got this background in here, which prevents you from actually reading what all your settings are here. It's very hard to read, but I can tell just looking at it that uh, the setting I made in the other client, 240 by 120 for a map size, is in indeed set. So a quick and easy way to set up this kind of client is to go in through the other client and uh, set everything up through the uh, the check boxes and the, the drop downs and everything it's a much easier way to do it because if you come in here to set up your game you have to do this at the command line you have to say for instance say set huts 75 to put 75 huts on the map and that's how you have to set up the game you have to type in all these options in this client so the game setup in this client isn't as intuitive as the other one so if you're looking to use this client, you're going to have to maybe uh, either learn the commands to type in or just uh, quickly go and uh, set up your defaults in the other client and come back, which is basically what I do. Uh, I'm going to be doing a playthrough series, but I think I will do it in the, uh, the SDL client. Um, it's not as robust as the, uh, the mainstream client that comes with it. Uh, you know, uh, you're kind of restricted uh, with some options, but... Uh, 
for the most part it works great and uh, it is a more immersive client and looks a lot more like Civ 3 than it does Civ 2 and we will see that once we get into a game I'm going to do a comparison uh, in game here in a, in, a, in a couple seconds and we'll just see what the difference uh, is in actual gameplay between the two so once again you can pick your nation eventually pick a nation there we go and we can drop down uh, and just select one and then you just start the game so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the other client um, and then we'll have a look at the gameplay in that one and then we'll come back to this client and we'll, uh, we'll, in, we'll have a look at the gameplay in this one okay so here we are in the GTK client um, it's very Civ 2-ish in the regard that you have a menu bar up here and you can control your units and anything in game through this menu up here um, the, everything's hotkeyed as well, so you can uh, you know hit B to build a city and all that kind of stuff, just like in the in the regular Civ games. But uh, it's very Civ 2 esque this client. So um, uh, basically, you have uh, a window here, and you can actually bring up other tabs here to, for your other information. Like if I want to bring up, uh, say, our our unit screen, say our nations. Uh, city screen, which we don't have any cities yet, but uh, in our economy and research, there's a tech tree here. And it's it's a fairly big tech tree. I'm just uh, a little slow to scroll though. Um, it's probably more my recording software doing that. Um, so yeah, you can just uh, basically if you want to pick pottery, you just click on that, and now you're researching pottery. And it's uh, because we don't have a city yet. There's no actual research going on. But we can come back. So basically, you navigate the game through these tabs here. If you want to go to your nation screen, see who you're talking to or whatever. And uh, there's diplomacy and everything as well. It all appears here. There's a message box that comes up here that'll come up uh, for any uh, in game messages that come up. Uh, you can define uh, what uh, messages are actually set as pop ups. If you come into options and go to message, and this you can actually either have uh, messages come up in the output window the messages window which doesn't exist yet because we haven't got any messages yet or you can have it actually pop up and so that's right in your face so if we come back here and if we'll just move you out here okay and we'll maybe just move you to this hill and that's our settler here so I think just for this particular playthrough, it's not an optimal spot, but for this uh, actual video, I'm just going to hit B. Just So I can just hit the B key to build. I guess we're the Zulus. And we have the ability to build phalanx already. Cool. Okay. So you can uh, add other stuff to this uh, queue here, and it'll go through and build them. And uh, you can add global work lists all that kind of good stuff so this is that this is your basic city screen and uh, there's all kinds of stuff in here and you can you can move your uh, citizens around to work different tiles just like you can in a regular Civ game and uh, all your stats are right here uh, production we were just looking at so uh, the happiness you can see what's affecting your happiness in the cities and there's a governor you can set up so that you can automate the city so you don't have to come back in. He'll build all your units and uh, take care of all your stuff for you. Or you can take care of it yourself. And you can see, you can set up what, uh, what tab is open when you first come into the city screen. So you can either uh, have it default to this one. So every time you open a city it comes to this page. Or go to the productions page is where I like to go right in here. Because I'm usually coming in to uh, build stuff. And in your overview, you'll see everything that you've built. This will end up being a big scroll box eventually with all your buildings and stuff in it. So that's uh, basically the city screen. And uh, that's basically the client and what you're looking at. So um, I'll just uh, move him down here. And over here. And I'm just going to move them around. I'm not going to get too much into the gameplay. And you can right click to scroll the map. So very basic, there's no real unit animations. Um, 
the game is more on gameplay than it is eye candy for sure. And it is a really good game. I remember having tons of fun with this. But that's a basic idea of this client. And I'm not going to make this video too much longer. So we'll go have another quick. There's a message box there. So if we uh, come down, you can see. Uh, yeah, failed move. I was trying to move into the ocean there a couple times. So your messages scroll here, so you just keep an eye on that message box for any alerts. And like I said, you can set stuff up so that's actually a pop-up window right in your face. So that's a good thing too. Because quite often I'll actually not even notice the messages. But anyways, that's, uh, that's this client. So we'll go have a look at the other client now. Okay, so here we are in the SDL client, and as you can tell by a quick glance, this resembles more of Civ 3 than it does of Civ 2 as the other client did. Uh, we have some uh, action buttons at the bottom, our mini map, and an info box here. So I'm just going to move a couple things around here for a sec. And we'll move you down there. And I might get you to mine that. So build a mine. 100 turns, oh boy. <laughs> Uh, okay, um, now if you remember in the other client, we could come up to our menu bar at the top, drop down, and uh, build our city that way. In this client, we can hit the build button. Or alternatively, we can just hit the B hotkey, as you can with any other civilization game, including both of these clients. But we'll just hit this button for now. Okay, so this is the city screen for the SDL client, and it's a lot more graphically orientated than the uh, the other client, the SDK client. Uh, you can see how many hammers we're building, and uh, how we're getting three food per turn. We have one surplus. Uh, we're going to grow in 20 turns. Our warrior will be done in two turns, all that good stuff. And we have uh, some information up here. Units present, unit supported, happiness, information about our pollution and trade routes, and a few options we can set for the city. Our production is done here. We come into this screen and uh, by single clicking the left key we can select it to build. Uh, if we change the production to a settler then we might have to hit the uh, check mark or we can double click. Okay so we can also queue stuff up. So we got a warrior there we can actually build a couple more. I'm hitting the right click key to actually queue those up and then we can put a seller behind it and then we just hit the check mark and that's all queued up and ready to go so that's basically how the city screen works now if there's one failing in this it has to be this um, the screen is way too small um, I can tell there's somebody working here but I can't tell what he's doing I can't see what the yield is uh, there is a workaround for it and by clicking out here I can actually move the map over and I've enabled the yields on the map. So I can see the one, two, three here, the one, per, uh, one food, one, two production and three gold there. And you can tell if I click into inside the city window here that I'm controlling that. I'm uh, clicking it on and off as you can see. So I can actually see what's going on by doing this. I can move that around and go, oh yeah, that's what we're making there. So that's how I sort of get around this. It's a bit of a pain, but um, yeah, unfortunately, you can't do much about it. So I'm just going to leave it uh, where it was. I think it was right there. Yeah. Unless I want it to grow quicker. Maybe I want it to grow quicker. There, 10 turns as opposed to 20 turns. It just sucks. We're only making one hammer now, but uh, eh, what can you do? So maybe we'll just leave it like that for this demonstration. Um, like I said, I'm not playing this through. I just thought I'd show you the clients here quickly. Okay, so just move around a bit, explore. Okay. So that's basically the uh, two clients uh, outlined. Uh, you can play the game in either or, you can actually uh, save this game and then go back into the other client and carry on in the other client if you wish. But it's the exact same game, the only thing that's changed is how you interact with it. And I should remind myself to disable that bell, that's kind of annoying. Okay, so that's the two clients showcased. Um, 
I, I'm thinking I'm going to do a playthrough video of this uh, game, and I'll probably do it in this client, so I'm not going to go too much further on this. But uh, I think it's kind of unique that they have two different ways and two different interfaces to play the same game. I'm not sure I've seen that before, so it might be something unique. There's also a third way you can play it. There's an HTML5 website. You can actually play this in your browser. Um, I'm not sure. Just go to Google and look for free Civ online, and then it'll come up. And yeah, you can just play this right through your browser. So you don't even have to download the client for it. So that's uh, three different ways you can actually play this game, which is pretty kind of cool. So I'm not going to say too much more. I'm going to leave this series or this video at this. And I just thought I'd point out a couple different ways to play this game. And I hope it was enlightening. And uh, thanks for watching. And we'll catch you next time.